Hello, I'm DJ Paulette. I am really known as a DJ, but I like to say I'm a music industry professional because I do lots of other things. I also have two radio shows, one on Reform Radio, which I've had now for five years. It's a monthly show, house music. I call it a Paulette takeover. Every month I have a guest mix from DJs from Chicago, London, France, really cool underground DJs and DJs that I like to lift up who have been heard, you know, voices that haven't been heard or aren't being heard that should be heard. And that's the Reform show. And then the Worldwide show I started over a year ago. I do a show there which is a bit different. I wanted to do something that stretched me um, as a DJ and a presenter. So I said I wanted to focus on my favourite thing, but like the real like core interest for me in terms of music, which is fo vocal, the voice. I started off in the music industry when I was 18, and I always knew I wanted to work in music anyway. I worked in the record library for Piccadilly Radio. I sung in bands, <laughs> um, played support to Curtis Mayfield and Deacon Blue in the time. And then I became a DJ in 92. Before a lot of people who were standing in front of my decks were born. And so that's always a bit of a head twister. 1994-95, I started, started working for record labels. I did press and publicity for Mercury Records for four years, which meant me working with Charles Peterson. And then 98, I went to work for Azuli Records and helped launch Defected Records to the press. So, I mean, I've done a lot and I've not even got to moving to Paris in 2004, where I stayed for nine years. I, I think possibly the nine years that I was in Paris were the most financially lucrative and the biggest sort of profile wise because I managed to get to a level where I was um, considered in the same breath as David Guetta, Bob Sinclair, Joachim Perrault, I was playing with all of those and I was the only woman that was headlining on the same posters as them. So, you know, I've worked in the music industry in France as well as the UK to the same level. Working at the Hacienda every month, when I was doing it, and like most people who work there will say, you know, from Ange Matthews to Peter Hook to Graham Park to Dave Haslam, we all say the same thing. We were just working. You know, the thing about anything that becomes anything or anyone who becomes a legend or a, you know, mythological. The myth comes with time. It's not, the myth isn't there in the present. It comes with time and it has to build with nostalgia and it has to build with also sometimes it not being there for people to experience that feeling or experience that energy or those happening. When I was doing it, I was just working. It was fun, it was great, great fun, don't get me wrong. It was just like this crazy gay party which was enabling me to get into my skin as a black female bisexual performer in front of people that I didn't know because I'd never DJed before. And this was all just the big learning testing ground, massive big learning curve, but I was just working. I love the Hacienda anyway. I'd been going there as a punter for years before then. So it didn't feel like, um, you know, the high point that it's actually become because it's only in standing back from it, you know, 10 years on, 20 years on, 30 years on, realising what my standing there and being behind the decks and being a woman in a world of men, what that actually meant. You know, I don't think I actually questioned it 
when I started DJing. I think I just saw, I was playing records in my favorite club in the city to some fantastic people every month at this great party and that's what it was. Most people would say, yeah, but why aren't you bigger? I have had various flashpoints where my mental health has impinged on how I work. And up until, really up until last year with the pandemic, I thought I dealt with a lot of it. I've always been someone who believes in therapy and you know, it's health, it's called mental health for a reason. First time, it hit me was really right at the beginning of my career because I was getting divorced when I started DJing. And that was really the start of me kind of compartmentalizing myself and my work self and thinking I was helping. The second time it happened was when I moved to Paris. There had been a trauma in London anyway, but then I moved to another country where I didn't speak the language, where I had to completely unlearn everything about being English and learn how to be and how to exist as a black woman in France with none of my friends around me, with, you know. It, and, and so that was point two. Point three was when my dad died. I went into like a three year depression after my dad died, but nobody would have known because I just worked all the way through it. I just concentrated and I was really focused on work and I was doing so fantastically well that nobody would have known. And then the fourth one was that I moved from Ibiza to come back to the UK because it was a crisis. I'd spent two years trying to work and it had kind of run down my profile instead of built it up. And by the time I came back to the UK, it was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, catastrophe. And then I was indecently assaulted and that just like pff, spun everything out of, you know, it just really just spun everything out of control and I ended up like back with healthy minds, weekly sessions, weekly sessions, weekly sessions, just tr trying to fix it. So I would say definitely the mental health challenge and trying to keep vertical when everything's kind of buffeting you and trying to knock you down is the single biggest challenge. You know, everything else, I can actually, I can say I can handle a lot. I have a really high threshold of pain, but mental health is the one that will kick me. And if that kicks me, then I'm in trouble. At the beginning, we couldn't talk about it. There was nobody to talk about it with, you know, you didn't talk about, oh, you know, I'm divorced, I feel like, you know, my life is in the toilet. Oh, somebody just sexually assaulted me. What do I do? You know, there wasn't that culture in the mid to late 90s of being able to vocalize any of that. There wasn't the culture in the mid 90s of being able to vocalize that you felt like you'd been discriminated against because you're a woman or a black woman or a gay or, or any of that. There, there wasn't that culture where we could comfortably discuss that and there was certainly not a culture where you could say I don't feel right in my head you know you couldn't tell anyone you just had to deal with it and now at least and at last there's been that breakthrough and also in Jamaican families you know it's considered like you're not allowed to show your vulnerability you know if you hurt yourself you go to your bedroom we're just raised in a culture of sort yourself out love. <laughs> Do I think it is becoming increasingly difficult for black women to break into the creative industries? I, part of me 
is super positive about the changes that I've seen in the last 30 years because I see more black women in the creative industries than I have ever seen. But that doesn't mean there's enough. That just means there's some now. <laughs> there's some now as opposed to being none, you know, as opposed to being not very many, as opposed to being countable. You know, at least now we can write a fairly healthy list of who is involved and running things and presenting things. You know, now I can think of, you know, at Radio One, I can think of at least four female presenters who are black and at least six, seven, you know, maybe eight who are people of color. In the 90s, there were none, zero, absolutely like flat plateau. So I am aware that there are more opportunities now and that people are listening to us now, but that doesn't mean that it is easy. I've always thought because there's nobody there, it means there's a space. <laughs> because there's nobody there and doing that thing, it means that there's an opportunity <laughs> to kick the door down and make your own space. And that's always how I've operated. I just went for it. I just realized there was something I wanted to do that I was good at, that I wanted to pursue. And I didn't think for a second, just like I've never done with anything in my life, I didn't think for a second that because there was nobody else doing it, it didn't mean that I couldn't do it. Incidentally, it didn't mean that once you kicked the door down and made your space that you were going to be accepted and all welcomed with open arms. It's been a battle <laughs> and it is still occasionally a battle, but I don't care. <laughs> but all of those women, they've had to work up to and against, and they've all come up against the blocks of being the only one in the room. And unfortunately, that only one in the room still holds that we've got one. Like, no, why can't you have more? Don't make the baby steps, just employ people, employ the people that are good. I'm very thankful that I'm in a position to have worked long enough and hard enough to deserve a place at the table, at some of the tables. I'm, I've not got a place at all of the tables, trust me. But I've got a place at some of the tables. But I'm aware that there's nobody behind me on the lineups. I'm aware that sometimes I am still the only woman on the lineup. Or I'm still the only woman in that particular room. You know, so where I think, where I know for a fact that there are more black women, people of color, uh, that there's a more diverse employment policy at play, the policy is working. It is definitely working, but you can have more than one. My advice to other black creators, male, female, gay, straight, you name it, is have a very firm idea, really have a very firm idea of who you are and where you wanna go, what you want to achieve. It's always got to come from you. And then create that thing, set about creating that thing. And I know this seems weird because I'm kind of telling you to telling people to do it themselves, but I am really telling people to do it themselves because then when you go to people and say, I can do this for you, you know who you are. You're not going to have them shift and mold you into something or someone who you're not. Just be very, very clear about who you are.